Right, so uh, we continue with our uh, development of the PML and uh, the concept that we have to keep in mind is that coordinate stretching is uh, mathematically the same as generating a anisotropic medium, therefore it absorbs, right, it has evanescent waves, okay. And the key idea was, uh, as we already mentioned over here, we have generalized this uh, del E and del H operator to now have a 1 by E x, 1 by E y, 1 by E z term. Similarly for the H, 1 by H x, 1 by H y, 1 by H z, okay. As a result of which I got a new dispersion relation which is over here. Um, and Maxwell's equations got redefined a little bit. The moment I put E x, E y, E z, all of them equal to 1, I get back vacuum, okay. So that is the condition. So, so far what we spoke about was just a simple one medium right, in which it has some values of E x, E y, E z, H x, H y, Z. But what was our original motivation? We wanted to put in an absorbing layer in our computational domain such that the waves did not get reflected back. So, for that we have to consider the interface between two media. So, that is what we will look at next. Um, so, uh, an interface between two mediums, okay. So, how will we do this is, let us say that I have a x y plane is uh, uh, denoted over here, z is equal to 0 is an interface, okay. So, this over here on top is region 1, this is z is equal to 0 and then I have region 2, okay. <clears throat> and uh, we will do a simple thing, we will consider a plane wave uh, that is you know falling on to from medium 1 on to medium 2, okay. So, for example, region 1 could be our computational domain, region 2 could be the PML layer, okay. So, that is the setup and I have some wave falling like this getting reflected over here and my goal is that this reflection coefficient should be 0 in the best case, right. That is what I want to design. Now, uh, so we will deal with plane waves, okay. So, now when you looked at uh, this kind of a problem, I mean this is something that we have been seeing from high school, plane, uh, a planar interface and a wave falling over there. That is when we derived the Fresnel reflection coefficients for two different polarizations. We had called it, that back then we had called them parallel polarization and perpendicular polarization depending on whether the electric field vector is in the plane or perpendicular to the plane, right. So, I know that any arbitrary plane wave can be broken up into two orthogonal polarizations, but how I choose those orthogonal polarizations is up to me. One convention is parallel perpendicular, but that is not the only way. Another way could be T e and T m. Those are also two orthogonal polarizations into which any arbitrary plane wave could be written. I need not do perpendicular and parallel, not exactly, right. So, what was the difference between, so for example, this was, okay, so this is E which is coming out of the board, okay. So, you, we, we will call this perpendicular polarization, right. But, and the other case E will be like this, right. So, now the, there is, yeah, okay, they are actually the same. So, there is a non-zero EZ or not, that is, yeah, that is basically the definition of TM and TE whether non-zero uh, EZ or not, fine. So, it makes life simple also, these are the two cases. But we will not use this perpendicular and parallel notation, we will just use T, E, T, M, okay. So, in T, M, what was our situation? I had H, Z, H, Z was 0, right. So, I had E, Z, E, Z, H, X, H, Y and then T, E, I had H z E x E y, okay. And reality is a linear combination of these two, fine, okay. So, what we will do is we will start with T, okay, and derive something and the generalize, I mean the together T m is actually even easier, okay. So, we will start with this one T polarization, okay. <coughs> so, Plane waves in two regions. I will start with the plane wave incident from region 1. What kind of waves do I expect? A reflected wave, transmitted wave, 
those are the waves that I expect, right? So this. So E incident, some vector E naught, E to the minus j, k. What should I call it? Let's call it k i dot r. Okay. And E naught in this case is going to be a vector in the x y plane, right? Because it's E x E y. Right. So whatever it is, we don't need to specify it. Similarly, I will have the reflected wave. Okay. So E reflected, okay, so this is going to be, so can I simplify the form of the uh, reflected wave? So the wave vector, I mean the electric field for the reflected wave, I can write it as some E R whatever, but is there any relation between the vector that I should write here and E naught? It should be? They should be in the same plane, right? Yeah. So I can write this as simply some r times e naught. And uh, what do I write for this? K r dot r, right? K r is the reflected wave vector. There will be a simple relation between k i and k r which we will derive, okay? And so this is reflected, this is incident, and then similarly I have a E transmitted again the way the plane should be the same. This is the transmitted wave. Now, uh, so when I try to use these equations, the what is the one thing to enforce given these equations? How do I proceed further? EI plus ER, what about EI plus ER? No. Systematically, what can we use? What is the principle? Tangential boundary conditions, which state that because, I mean, in general that will not be true, but here it is true because no, not no current sources are of course not there, but remember the boundary conditions are for tangential fields. Yeah, exactly. So boundary conditions for tangential fields my fields are already tangential because there is no z component right if there were a z component that would be a normal component right so since no z component then i can write ei plus er that is the field on the in region 1 that should be equal to et at only at z equal to 0, okay. <clears throat> uh, so then what happens next? So we will substitute these uh, expressions inside. So I am going to get, so E naught plus interface, z equal to 0 is the interface. Okay. Region 1 is defined by z greater than 0, region 2 is defined by z less than 0, top and bottom. Okay, so what do, what will these, I mean I can cancel out the E naught from here, from all the side, from both sides. What else, what other further simplifications can I say from here? This is a bit of a revision of what you would have done in, un, in the, your undergraduate electromagnetics course. What can I say from here? The propagation constant? But can I say that by looking at this equation? So for example, this equation, so k, k i in general will have a x, y, z component. This interface is happening 
at z equal to 0. So k dot r will only have a kx x k plus ky y. Okay, the z equal to 0 term is gone. So I cannot actually say anything about the z components. Okay, what about the x and y components? What can I say? Because I mean, what is the mathematical argument or reasoning from here? I mean, you can interpret these as phasors. These are phasors that are rotating. Right. So, this should be true at z equal to 0, but at every, at if I take any point x, y, it should be true. Right. Because the choice of origin is arbitrary. It is a plane interface, there is a wave hitting over here. Right. And the wave is not a, it is not a point. Right. It is hitting the entire interface. So, this should be true at all x, y. Right. And you notice that this k i dot r, this is going to have terms like k i x, x plus k i y, y. And these phases are rotating in whatever in phase space and this expression should be true always. So, what is the only possibility for, for these phases to rotate at the same speed in some sense? So, visualize this, right. The first is a phasor second is a phasor, third is a phasor, right. As I change the values of x and y, what will happen? These phasors will change in phase. Now, I am adding two phasors on the left hand side and equating it to another phasor on the right hand side. And this relation should be true for all values of rotation. When will that be possible? When all the phasors are rotating at the same speed. Otherwise, sometimes they will be in phase, sometimes they will not be in phase and this relation will not be true. So, when the for the phase for the phase speed in some sense to be the same, what can I say? All these ki x's and all they should all be the same, right? So that's what is called in optics the phase matching condition. This is actually the rigorous way of deriving your Snell's laws. Okay. So phase matching it is called. It's more like a common sense thing. So ki x should be equal to k r x should be equal to k t x and k i y should be equal to k r y should be equal to k t y. If I ensure this, then no matter what x and y are plug into this equation, the phases will rotate at the same speed. Once this is done, what do I have to, I mean the immediate conclusion from here is, Because the phases are equal, they can can get cancelled off, right? Right. So this is at T e polarization. All right. So it's clear what we did, right? <coughs> now next is, so I've got one equation in two variables R and T, right? What do I do next? But wait, I mean one thing before that you notice that this, uh, these relations over here, these taken together basically give you a Snell's law. Once you write your, uh, these k vectors in terms of angles, you will get your n1 sin theta equal to n2 sin theta, all of that comes from here. But we are not going that route. Next is, next what do we need to do? Normal components, is that a wise idea? What, when we derive our reflection coefficients from a planar interface we did in the undergrad course, what did we do? We used tangential boundary conditions for both E and H, not normal boundary conditions. So I have used tangential boundary conditions for E, next what remains? H tan, right. So next is going to be H tan conserved at This is actually how you derive your R for T and TM polarization, right? You, the second equation comes from here and you just uh, enforce it. Yeah, because Z equal to 0 is the tangent to the surface. Well, it is in my hand how I design the surface, right? Because I am designing the layer. So, I am going to I'll make sure that it is planar. But if it is weird, then it is weird, then it will only be a local condition approximately true. Yeah. The direction of AR is different from the direction of AR. The direction of, uh, yeah, the, di yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
हाँ सो द डिरेक्शन ऑफ द इंसिडेंट एंड द रिफ्लेक्टेड वेव वैक्टर आर डिफरेंट एंड द डिफरेंस इज प्राइमरली कमिंग बिकॉज ऑफ विच डिमेंशन एक्स वाई और जेड जेड राइट इंसिडेंट इज गोइंग इन माइनस जेड रिफ्लेक्टेड इज गोइंग इन प्लस जेड राइट सो जेड इज द गाई हुज मेकिंग द डिफरेंस बट जेड टर्म वैनिश फ्रॉम दिस फेज मैचिंग कंडीशन only at the interface i mean boundary conditions are anyway true only at the interface okay the z component of the wave vectors will be very crucial we'll come to it subsequently but that's a good point okay. i mean you have a wave vector that's going like this if i flip the sign of the z component it will just go up right 